Welcome everyone to our webinar, Fall Prevention Month 2019 Activity Implementation Webinar Series with an activity spotlight on safe winter walking, facilitated by the Fall Prevention Community of Practice. My name is Mariel Ang and I am the project coordinator of the Ontario Neurotrauma Foundation. ONF sponsors the Fall Prevention Community of Practice and its online platforms, Loop and Loop Junior. Before we begin, I'm going to give you a rundown on the Zoom meeting platform. Please note that your screen may look a bit different depending on the type of computer you are using. If your Zoom application is opened in full screen, you can double click or press the escape button on your keyboard to exit the full screen. There should also be a button on the top right corner of your screen that says exit full screen. The webinar technology consists of two parts, audio and visual. Both visuals and audio can be provided through your computer monitor and speakers. To test your audio settings, look for the audio settings or join audio button in the bottom left corner of your screen. This will provide options for testing your computer microphone and speakers. To adjust your audio settings, click the audio settings button. If you look at, at the bottom center of your screen, you will see buttons that will allow you to access a chat box, raise hand and Q&A features on Zoom. The chat box allows you to send messages to the webinar presenters and other webinar participants. You can use the raise hand button if you want me to connect with you through the chat box, and you can submit questions through the Q&A box. Please note that you'll only be able to view questions you have asked and not questions posed by other participants. If you need to leave the webinar at any time, please look for the red leave meeting button in the bottom right corner of your screen. If you have any questions about the technology during the presentation, you can type them into the chat box or use the Q&A feature on the Zoom software. Alternatively, you can email me at mariel at onf.org and I'll work with you to resolve technical issues as soon as possible. Please note that the webinar is being recorded and a YouTube link will be sent to all participants in about one week along with the presentation slides. This slide provides the webinar outline for today. I'm going to start by giving you a walkthrough of the updated Fall Prevention Month website and welcome questions from the audience. I will then introduce our presenters who will uh, speak about the spotlight activity. Again, if you have any topic related questions throughout the presentation, please type them into uh, the Q&A and during the Q&A sessions, they will be read aloud to the group. I'm now going to give you a quick walkthrough of the updated Fall Prevention Month website. And please give me a minute just to switch over my screens there. So you should all be able to see the Fall Prevention Month website. Uh, this is our homepage and you can see that you can easily navigate to either the adults or the children's campaign. So we're gonna navigate to the adult campaign because we're talking about safe winter walking today. Um, and from here, you can see that the major change that we've made to our Fall Prevention Month website is by um, sectioning out two major sections. Uh, we have our additional resources category on our right and our take action category to our left. Within the additional resources categories, you'll see that uh, the resources are further categorized into three main headings and they'll look familiar to you if you have um, been on our website in the past. And please note that the additional resources, we are linking outwards towards other websites that provide other evidence-based uh, resources on fall prevention. It's by no mean meant to be a, um, a full repository of fall prevention month um, tools and resources. However, it is just meant to provide some high level resources that you may use. Underneath the main heading, you'll also see what we call breadcrumbs and you're able to use this to navigate back and forth between the various pages. If you navigate to our take action section, this is gonna have everything you need to host an activity or to um, promote the Fall Prevention Month campaign. So if you have a number of promotional materials that you can leverage um, to promote uh, fall prevention within your communities, both on social media and um, in person. If you go to our ideas for activities section, you can see that there, we have a number of different activities that you can really take and um, mold to your communities and amend to however, um, to whatever setting you are in and to, for it to suit your needs. And you'll see over here, we have our safe winter walking campaign. If you have, um, any questions, you can feel free to contact us. We have our, um, on the main menu bar here, we have a contact page. Um, and on the main menu, we also have a high level navigation for both the adults and the children campaign. 
So here you'll be able to see a bird's eye view of how the website is organized. And you can also use this to navigate to um, some quick links. So for example, Safe Winter Walking um, is just one click away from our homepage. Again, if you have any questions about the website at any point in time, you can feel free to um, put them in the Q&A box right now or type a message into the chat box. I'm just gonna switch over my screen now, back to our initial slide. So at this time, you can feel free to type in any questions about the Fall Prevention Month website. And in the meantime, I will be introducing our presenters, Amber Sheik and Marguerite Thomas. Amber Sheik is a health promoter at the Grey Bruce Health Unit. She has worked in multiple program areas and roles in public health. Most recently, she has worked in the areas of injury prevention and healthy communities and is co-chair of the Grey Bruce Fall Prevention and Intervention Program. Amber has experience in planning, implementing, and evaluating public health programs. Amber holds a Bachelor of Science and Master of Public Health degrees from Guelph University. Marguerite is the con consultant liaison of the Fall Prevention Community of Practice, sponsored by the Ontario Neurotrauma Foundation. Marguerite is also a member of the National Partners for Fall Prevention Month and the Huron Perth Stepping Out Safely Coalition. Both Sheik and Thomas are members of the Southwest Ontario Regional Fall Prevention Network, the Great Bruce Fall Prevention and Intervention Program, as well as the Community Coalition for the Prevention of Falls in Older Adults. So without further ado, please take it away, Amber and Marguerite. And Amber, you may now start to share your screen. Thank you, Mario, and welcome everyone. Thank you for attending today. I hope that everyone has been able to enjoy summer weather, but it is also good to be planning ahead for Fall Prevention Month. Next slide, please. The Safe Winter Walking Campaign offers a variety of activities and it is there for you to adapt for your own home area. And all of this information, as Mariel has just shown you, is available on the Fall Prevention Month website. Next slide. The background of this campaign started with the Southwest Ontario Fall Prevention Network and Amber and I are both members of that particular group. We wanted to put together the best evidence we could for both content uh, for safe winter walking and also for the ways to reach older adults. Next slide. So we are sharing what we did. The cost and the staff required for you would re depend upon the size and the scope of your choices. We started with a literature search and that led to a fact sheet, the content of which we developed into a brochure, a display, a number of articles, a PowerPoint presentation, and a poster. Amber, take it away. Great, thanks Marguerite. Um, so I'll just share a little bit about how we got started with the background research and planning. Um, and that really began with a literature search um, performed by loop of academic articles, internet sources, and news articles. Um, that provided um, information about safe winter walking um, and really helped us to learn about what you can do to stay safe um, in the winter when walking. Um, the full text of, of these academic articles are linked um, on the literature search, um, which is available on the Fall Prevention Month website. Um, but if they are not linked, you can contact the Loop Knowledge Broker who can help you access them. Uh, next step was really about public education and awareness building, and there are a number of tools um, that have been developed related to that. Um, the first was a fact sheet. So this fact sheet can be um, handed out as is, as provided as a handout, um, or it can be used as a list of key messages and facts to help develop further resources. Um, and this was informed, of course, by the literature search, um, and developed by the Southwest Ontario Fall Prevention Network as well. We also have a brochure um, that is like a four-fold brochure providing information on the benefits of walking um, and those key messages around tips for winter walking um, for before, during, and after your walk. 
Um, if you are interested in adapting this brochure, um, you can include your own logos and it will require you to update the photos with your own stock photos as well. The safe winter walking display is another um, tool that has been used. Um, and this photo is showing an example of a display at an event in our area. Um, it had a display board, we had a raffle, as well as some take home um, information for um, the event attendees. You can see the loop discussion for more information about developing a display. And then back to Marguerite. There were a number of articles written and these were mostly my work and I started out with the luxury of a 1400 word art, uh, publication in the Grey Bruce here in Perth Boomer magazine. Uh, for those of you who write articles for magazines, you will remember that most of them want a maximum of 300 to 500 words. So this was a great luxury. And then I did get a number of requests from smaller places that um, they they would like a shorter article so we adapted those and they were sent to the appropriate places that wanted them other than that there were some other topics that were asked for as well and they were also published and all of these are in the uh, fall prevention month website um, next slide amber so if you have a local news outlet please contact them because they are really quite amenable to publishing things that are local and you can make it your own. Newspapers and magazines, they love to have a report on what the local statistics are and how they compare it to provincial or national statistics. And above all, if you can find it, they really love a personal story from someone who has had a fall and they want to share the experience. The real bottom line for taking any of those articles is to adapt it and make it your own for your home area. Back to you, Amber. Great, so just to share a few more tools that we have available on the Fall Prevention Month website for Safe Winter Walking Campaign. Um, we also have a PowerPoint presentation that's a generic presentation. It was created by the South, Southwest Ontario Fall Prevention Network and the Fall Prevention Community of Practice. So you can feel free to add your own images and adapt this to your local region. And there's also a poster available. Um, this poster is available as a PDF or as an InDesign file so that it can be adapted. Um, and let us know if you're, you are interested in adapting any of these materials so that we can keep track of, of that. And then finally, just to provide an overview um, for everyone of those kind of three main steps that we took as a group in developing the Safe Winter Walking Campaign. So the first step that we already spoke about was the background research and planning um, to really help us understand more about safe winter walking um, and some of those key messages. We all know that physical activity throughout the year is part of healthy aging and can help to prevent falls and fractures. Um, and bringing forward that evidence and the information that's out there um, helps us in developing key messages so that older adults can be prepared with reflective gear and warm clothing and non-slip footwear when they're out walking, um, have their eyes checked regularly, and um, be aware to take extra precautions when walking over ice and wet leaves and some of those hazards that we do see during the winter months. So armed with that um, bit of evidence, um, start to plan your activities and think about your target, the format, um, and the location that you uh, might be doing, might be um, implementing the campaign in. Step two is around public education and awareness building. So today we have shared many examples of activities and resources that you can use um, to implement throughout your campaign. Promote your campaign activities by reaching out to community members, community centers, and other groups who you think may be interested in your campaign. And Marguerite spoke a bit about the media and using earned media and articles um, as another strategy. And there is um, information about um, engaging with the media on the Fall Prevention Month website. And then step three is evaluation. So really during this um, piece, you want to look at 
How is your campaign making an impact? Um, decide during planning what and how, and how you will measure um, things, and then assess the lessons learned for the future, um, maybe through asking questions of event participants or partners that you engage with. And back to Marguerite for a few final thoughts. So what our wish for you is that your clients are able to enjoy winter walking and to avoid injuries. Amber and I would like to thank you for attending and we would be very pleased now to answer any questions that you will have. And this is a list of the resources that uh, some of the resources that we did use. Perfect. Thank you very much, um, Marguerite and Amber. And you can all see that they have, the, have provided their contact information on the current slide. So if anybody has any further questions after this webinar, you are free to get in touch with them. Uh, at this point, I'm going to turn it over to our webinar participants. If you have any questions, please feel free to type them into the Q&A box. So you should be able to see that feature um, on the Zoom menu bar. Um, with the little Q&A icon. Alternatively, you can also put your questions into the chat box. You are able to select if you are chatting with only panelists or if you wanna share your question among attendees, you can do so as well. Um, Marilyn Starr has asked, did you say that the PowerPoint and poster is available on the website for fall prevention? Hi, this is Amber and yes, the PowerPoint and the poster are available on the Fall Prevention Month website under the Safe Winter Walking Campaign section. Thanks, Amber. Um, yes, I did want to just walk through quickly on the website where they, everyone can find all of this information um, and all of the downloads that Amber and Mercury mentioned. So if you're on the uh, Fall Prevention Month website, uh, as I mentioned, Safe Winter Walking is available from the top menu bar under Adults Take Action um, under Ideas for Activities. You can click on Safe Winter Walking and it'll take you onto this page. So if you scroll down, you can see um, a breakdown of high level information about the activity, uh, potential costs, the timeline. And then if you continue to scroll down, you'll be able to see downloads of each individual resource that Amber and Marguerite spoke about. So the literature search, the article written for Boomer Magazine, the PowerPoint, fact sheet, um, et cetera, as you scroll down. So uh, this activity has a lot of really, really great resources that you can access here. Um, Amber also mentioned a discussion post on Loop that Emily Powell created um, uh, back in November of 2017. And she's also um, broken down instructions even further and provided some actual images on um, the event that they hosted that year. Um, so you can also, if you are a member of Loop, you can sign in and um, access this discussion post and you can read a, with a little bit more detail um, some of the, um, the elements that Emily included in that campaign. Great, so I'm seeing a few more questions come in through the question and answer. Um, Julie Cordasco has uh, just a comment. We have trouble getting people to attend. Uh, Marguerite and Amber, do you want to comment on that? I, I'd like to comment it on it and then have Amber chime in. Julie, um, I, I worked as a public health nurse for many years and did uh, quite a number of seniors events. And one thing that really was most successful was going to venues that are already established. If you have any kind of a seniors club, a, a dining club, anywhere where seniors already go, that, that is great because you've already got a captive audience. And of course, the other thing is when you offer food, people will always turn up for food. If you have had, uh, something happen in your community that would be relevant, like somebody had a fall or uh, your, your city is working on something around bylaws, that type of thing is a, a great opportunity to take advantage of what's already in the media. And don't be afraid to, to contact your local media and magazines and newsletters. And um, if you have a home and community support associations, um, 
they they tend to pull groups together too but you can also put inserts in the newsletter about tips for winter walking and asking them to contact you so i hope that answers your question is there anything more thanks marguerite uh, amber do you have anything to add nope i think that's exactly it thanks marguerite Great. Um, Julie did elaborate. What can we do to increase attendance? What do you find is the best? It has to be fun. There has to be food. Um, and word of mouth, like if you can find champions, that, that's your best. People that you know in the community who will encourage other people. It's it's a whole other course. I'd love to talk about it, about the best ways to reach older adults, but we'll move on to the other questions. Great. Thank you, Marguerite. That does sound like it would be a good webinar topic. <laughs> uh, Catherine Fries has asked, would you recommend segmenting messaging for older adults of different age cohorts and or separate messaging for caregivers? Uh, this is Amber, and I would say with our campaign, uh, we did focus on just a core set of messages and didn't um, break it out, out any further by age or caregivers. I think because um, everyone might be in a slightly different situation with their mobility and their comfort level and their activities level, activity level regardless of their age, um, that we've kind of been able to keep those messages a little bit broad, general, and applicable to most older adults. So we have not um, done anything as far as segmenting further. Um, Marguerite, do you have anything to add to that? Well, regardless of, of the different age cohorts, uh, or whether you are a caregiver with somebody with issues, so much of what you're looking at is exactly the same. Um, like I was a caregiver for a number of years, and you, when someone is frail and you're trying to assist them, it still is a lot of the very safe things. And that includes really not going out when it's icy. That was one of the questions that uh, had come up in, in, uh, in one of the discussions on loop too, is dealing with ice conditions. And sometimes it's just wise to say, you know what, today is not a day we should be taking a frail person outside. Great, thanks very much, uh, Amber and Marguerite, for that answer. Um, we have one more question from Janice Bailey. Is there any evidence or any studies about using crampons as a way of preventing falls uh, walking on icy surfaces? I think that would be a great question to ask our knowledge broker. I have to admit, I have not seen anything that is that definitive. I don't know about you, Amber. Uh, no, I know that is a recommendation in some of our key messages is just to consider um, using a cane, walking poles, or ice grippers on footwear uh, when going outside. So it might depend on the conditions and um, the individual um, device that's used. I know that there is a website, um, ratemytreads.com, oh, yeah. um, that is part of a research arm of the Toronto uh, Rehab Institute, and they actually have information about specific um, footwear, um, including um, kind of those ice grippers or spikes, so that might be a good place to look for some of that. And if I can just chime in too, Janice, um, I had a pair of crampons that I, went, I was up in Nunavut a few years ago, and they really were not that appropriate for what I had. So you, you would want to be very careful in what you purchased and that it was appropriate. The Rate My Treads website from TRI, it's quite fascinating because it isn't the actual depth of the tread as much as it is the material. It's a fascinating website. And do enjoy do enjoy going to it they do fabulous fabulous work I I can't say enough good things about them wonderful thank you so much those are really great responses to the questions that we received um, if there are any more questions um, from our um, webinar participants please uh, continue to type them into the question and answer box um, Janice Bailey does this I will check that website thank you so glad that that will uh, hopefully um, help answer James's question. 
Uh, again, if there are any other questions, feel free to type them into the Q&A. Um, I will just take this time to mention that we do have one more activity implementation webinar coming up, and that's gonna happen on Tuesday, July 16th. Uh, this one is geared towards our children's campaign, so if there are any of you who are working um, to prevent falls across the lifespan or who also work with um, parents uh, and caregivers of children, um, this might be of interest to you, and the activity spotlight will be finding hazards in the home. So keep an eye out for that. I will be including the registration link for that um, for that webinar in the follow up email from the um, from the webinar. Um, Marilyn has asked in the chat box to our panelists. According to previous webinars I've attended, the rate my trends. Rate My Treads program indicates that nearly all winter boots rate one snowflake out of three. Do you know if there has been any progress made with developing material to improve traction for winter walking? To my knowledge, there has been some improvement. Um, first of all, all women's uh, footwear going back a couple years uh, was, was kicked to the curb. There was no women's footwear that was um, anywhere near being as effective as it should be. And um, I, I think there's a couple now that they're not as great as we'd like them to be, but they're there. And some of the companies have been really interested in this and have been improving what they're doing. So it, it, progress is being made, but like women's fashion boots are probably the, um, the worst thing you can wear in the winter. Sad, sad but true. The Southwest Ontario Fall Prevention Network does not have an online presence because who we really are, um, it's, it's a, a number of public health units and some other agencies as well. And so we're not a separate, um, we're not a, we're, we're an, an entity made up of those people, but both Amber and I are uh, members of that. And if you have any questions for us, we would be happy to answer them. Just to go back to a minute to Amber talking about the implementation, it was great to have the, uh, the, the, the support of that whole group to get it started. And, and it, it was um, the work from the Huron County Health Unit, you know, sort of doing the groundwork and everybody participated. We were able to get um, money put together to print out the brochures with each of our groups doing our own contact information on them. So there was a lot of teamwork, but because a lot of that's already done, we're hoping we've made it easier for you to do your work in your home area. Great, thank you, Marguerite. I did just want to show um, our participants because there has been some mention of the Rate My Treads website. We do also feature the website on our Fall Prevention Month. So um, if everyone saw how I got there, I really just used the search bar available on the website uh, to type in Rate My Treads. And it appeared in a search. So once we click on the actual title, it'll take us to a short description and we can click view the website which will navigate us to the Red My Treads website. If you have an opportunity, this is a fabulous place to visit. And, and they, um, I, I actually did this testing myself. It's amazing. Wonderful. Um, so uh, I'm saying being aware of the time, um, if there are any more questions for our presenters, please continue to type them either in the Q&A or in the webinar chat box. Um, oh, I think Marilyn has also um, just elaborated on another question in the chat box. My understanding from research is that balance exercises are more important than walking in terms of preventing falls. Any comment on this? Outdoor walking in the winter time is a high risk activity unless indoor walking is an option. I, well, I can comment on that unless you want to go ahead, Amber. Um, I'll start with a couple thoughts and then <laughs> you can uh, fill in. Um, so my first thought is that, um, yeah, I have seen that kind of walking is maybe not enough um, for older adults, but having those balance exercises for all of us um, is really important in preventing falls. Um, but the overall, I think, benefits of physical activity are still recognized. Um, and for someone who might be in like a rural area where they don't have access to some of those indoor walking options, um, 
you know, walking might be one of those few accessible and enjoyable activities. So um, we're kind of, I guess, looking at balancing those two things with safety and, and keeping active. Marguerite? Yes, that's correct. And, and we had a recent posting on our Loop um, website about uh, exercises. Strength, balance, and flexibility are so important. And walking alone does not give you that. You need more than that. It's like cross training uh, to to make it as safe as possible. Again, as I've said, don't go out on days when it's really nasty. Like to advise your people not not to do that. So we're not saying it's a hundred percent the be all end all. We're saying it's part of a program. Great, thank you very much. And Marilyn's just saying thank you for the resources and the info. Um, so again, if there are any last minute questions, feel free to type them in. Oh, Julie has also asked, has there been any campaigns to improve sidewalk clearance? Actually, I think I worked in the area where Amber is now, and uh, we, we actually did a campaign, uh, it's maybe about 10 years ago now, and we, we worked with the, the city of Owen Sound because they were keen to prevent lawsuits and that this was a, one of those media opportunities where uh, something had happened. And uh, so we, 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 we we were able to to push for that. I don't know what the status is now because I'm not in that area right now, but it's a good one. Do you know any follow up for that, Amber, at the moment? Yeah, this is Amber, not specifically um, for that, but I would say that um, in our area, many of the um, like age friendly groups or Coalition on Aging, um or other seniors groups are are good um place for kind of the voice of an older adult to recognize some of those barriers to um walking or keeping active and then bringing them forward to um their local municipalities who are often involved in in those groups so that's kind of been a good avenue for some of that communication to take place but it's a really good point and good um good thought to kind of also look at some of those policy um areas around creating an environment that's safe safer this this program that we did it was actually quite related to reporting hazardous um, ha hazardous conditions on your sidewalks and in the community and I'll tell you just from experience one of the things that we did uh, is we had a, a quite a number of brochures printed out and we did the massive mail out that you can do through Canada Post whereby it goes in everybody's mailbox unbeknownst to us we thought we would get billed when we took it down they wanted immediate payment and we needed to get this out uh, and so fortunately it happened to be like a day before all, all the checks go out or something so we were able to make it happen but it's fascinating as you live and learn and think you've covered all the basis basis and then discover that you haven't quite so if we can uh, if we can help you with any of our lessons learned, we would be thrilled to do that for you. Oh, beet juice. Beet juice is used. This is another question here. Beet juice is being used. I don't know about sidewalks, but in Huron County, where I live now, they do it on the roads. So it would be interesting um, if you need contact with Huron County people, uh, email me and I will put you in touch. Great. This has been some amazing discussion back and forth on this activity um, from a lot of our webinar participants. So I'm going to thank everybody who is on the line for um, joining us for this webinar. And I hope you were able to uh, learn a lot and get some good um, activity ideas uh, for uh, whatever you might have planned in November. Um, we still have some time. Uh, this webinar was scheduled to go till 12.45. So if you have any um, any other last minute burning questions, please feel free to type them into the chat in the Q&A. I will just take this time to thank our presenters, Marguerite and Amber, for their lovely presentation, uh, their, their great insights, and their really great responses to all of our questions that we've had so far. 
um, Marguerite and Amber, I'm not sure if you have any um, any last minute comments or questions. No? I, I just really hope that uh, people are able to access the Fall Prevention Month website, which of course is different from Loop, but you will find some discussions on Loop that are interesting as well. And that any of these resources, any follow-up questions, don't hesitate to contact us because we love to share. <laughs> Wonderful, and that, uh, that does remind me um, for those of you who are um, on the line um, and aren't a member of the Loop Fall Prevention Community of Practice, um, it is free to register. You can find us on uh, www.fallsloop.com. Uh, this year we've also launched, or sorry, not this year, but last year we launched a new online community of practice for children's fall prevention, which is Loop Junior. And so if you work with that audience as well, you can find that website at www.jr.fallsloop.com. Um, if there are some very uh, more questions or um, uh, different ideas uh, that are sparking from this, uh, this activity, um, Marguerite and Amber, I do welcome you guys to um, continue the conversation on loop. Um, when the webinar has ended, you're gonna be redirected to Zoom and in, in, invited to participate in a short survey. Please click the blue continue button on your browser and you'll be redirected to our brief evaluation survey. We always appreciate it if you can provide us feedback so that you can, we can continue to offer high quality webinars like the one we just experienced. And so I'm not seeing any other questions come in through the chat and the Q&A. So with that, I will close out the webinar. Thank you all and have a wonderful day. See you next time.